Workers on the front line, our job puts us at risk. We don't get paid for injuries that force us to go sing. We are the bonnet a number on a list. To them, we don't exist. Nobody sees us. But we're always there. A statistical reminder of a firm that doesn't care. We've got a colleague who uh, was injured at work. He ended up having three weeks off for his injury that he had working for Barnet Council. Barnet ultimately refused to pay him for these three weeks, so he ended up with no money for three weeks. So we had a ballot, we ended up going on a continuous strike, starting on October the 18th. We're in our third week now. His employer is the Barnet Group, which is a company 100% owned by Barnet Council. We, at the same time, we're negotiating that all workers get sick pay in this particular company and they agreed with us. We said, well, let's bring it forward. They said, no. We do repairs to social housing, so that can be painting and decorating carpentry, locks. The individual concerned is a ground worker, so his work would involve a lot of digging, a lot of mixing cement, so that's how he did his back. If your back's hurting and you're doing the kind of work he does, then you've got to have time off. We asked them for, could he be top put on reduced duties? They flatly refused and uh, wouldn't pay them at all, so here we are. These guys do on average 200 jobs a week. So now, 480 jobs not done for council tenants. What's this principle that means so much for you that you will see your residents without a repair service for 12 days? It's just three weeks pay. This is nothing compared to the amount of money some of these so-called exec paid out. The boss of the Barnet Group owns £202,000, more than the Prime Minister. They've offered him a loan, which would put him in worse debt, so he's refused that. The money that they've lost over one week, never mind three weeks, the money they've lost over one week is probably triple what they would have needed to pay him out. The reason they're not doing it is a political decision. They're going head toe-to-toe to -toe with the trade union saying to decide who makes decisions here. And we have to say it's the union. My name is Jude. It's my first time ever, ever to be on a strike. And I have to say I'm very proud. Yay! These guys will work every day. They're now my family because I'm standing yeah. with them and they're they standing, standing with me. We're just about to go into a health ballot in unison. Yeah. And people are thinking, how do we do it? And I point to you on Facebook and say, that's how you do it. One person injured is all of us injured, and we mustn't forget that. A worker who's under threat is a migrant worker. And we know we've got a Tory government that wants to divide us, that wants to say refugees are the problem. Don't stick together. And what do these workers say? They say, I don't care where you come from. I don't care what the colour of your skin is. I don't care your faith or your sex or your sexuality. You are our workmate and we will stand together. Yeah. And that unity is the secret of how all great change comes. A Labour Council is allowing people to go without sick pay. A Labour Council is forcing people to take indefinite strike action to win a basic right. That can't be, that can't be right, that can't be reasonable and that needs to be called out for what it is. They need to remember who put them in there and they need to remember what happens when they don't listen. Everyone on that council should hang their heads in shame for what they're allowed yeah. to do. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame! Anybody injured at work, no matter whether they work for a private contractor or they're in-house, it's their obligation and their legal duty to pay this member out. During the first days of COVID, when people were scared to go out of their houses, who were the people who actually got up and went to work? It was ordinary people like the repairs team. It was people on the front line. They're two years on, were told that you don't even deserve sick pay. It's disgusting. Three weeks pay is nothing to some of these people. But to us, it is a lot. Cost of living crisis is eating and is eating hard. People are relying on food banks, working people are uh, relying no, on food banks. Awesome. And it's situations like this that push people into having to use food banks. Barnet Alliance for Public Services has been campaigning for the last 12 years 
against the previous Tory council who was privatising the whole of the council into the hands of capita. And we were here in May outside this council, outside this town hall, welcoming the Labour councils because we thought there was going to be a change. But change has not happened with this decision over the Barnet Town. My name's Joe. I live in New Barnet in a supported accommodation. As somebody with mental health issues, the accommodation is run by a greedy private company. There's no Wi-Fi in my accommodation. There's only one lift. There was no health and safety program during the pandemic. Staff are overworked and underpaid. Staff get named and shamed for the smallest of mistakes. There's not enough training for staff. The staff are not unionized and are scared to be. Work for the vulnerable is an essential yet undervalued sector of work, which is why it needs to stop being in the hands of private greedy investors. I bring you solidarity from Brent Trades Council. To me, it's, it sums up the new mood that's sweeping the country. We've had enough. We've had enough of being exploited, taken advantage of and being taken for granted. We will be here week in, week out. We are on continuous strike and we will not go on tour. We have defeated them and we have um, won justice for our member here. They started the fight. We're going to finish the fight. Yeah. 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 An we're workers who repair and fix, no jobs too big or small. It's one and all and all for one, that's our motto call. Workers on the front line, our job puts us at risk.